Hey guys, my name is Shai. I'm very excited to be here today. I'm just feeling in such a good mood. It is the new moon in Virgo on the time I am filming this, and that doesn't really have anything to do with the reading, but I think it has something to do with how fresh and light I am feeling. I just kind of have a sense that a lot of people, at least the people that I'm tuning into, have recently or are right now shifting their consciousness like upwards and shifting their consciousness into a, a better, more preferable, more optimal timeline. And that's actually what I want to do this reading about. This is how can you shift into your highest timeline or how can you align with that timeline uh, most effectively? Um, it's actually going to be pretty quick because I do this for myself almost every day. I pull one singular tarot card and I just ask, what energy should I lean into? What energy should I align with in order to manifest or move into my highest timeline? And I find <laughs> I don't need to do a big complicated spread for that. I use just one singular card and whatever that energy is, I try just throughout the day to kind of cultivate that kind of energy to kind of lean into it and see where I can add more of that into my life. And for me, that's a really good way of just navigating how I'm operating on any given day. So that's what we got here. There's actually three cards per pile, uh, two oracle cards just to give you extra context and messages, I guess. But the main focus is going to be on the one singular tarot card that is going to tell you what energy you want to be leaning into, at least for a bit. You know, um, these energies don't last forever because obviously it's not just one energy to manifest your highest timeline forever. Um, it shifts and it change, changes, but for you, for right now, until you start to feel things shifting, the energy of the tarot card we pull is going to be the one you want to try and align with to help you optimize your future, we'll say. So go ahead and pick your card. It's pile one to six. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. You guys, I'm very excited. You guys got the green man. I don't know if or how many of you are familiar with, you know, kind of Celtic style mythology. If you are interested in medieval literature or just anything about the wild wood or the primordial forests, the green man is a very important archetype in a lot of European literature, actually. And he has um, analogs in lots of other types of traditions, but this deck is, it's just based in European folklore. So it's the green man. And this is such a good energy. I, I've actually been haunted most of my life by the green man. And I know a few of you getting this have a personal relationship with the green man or the archetype, or you've had an interest in him, or you see his face everywhere. This is really cool. And so in terms of leaning into your highest timeline, the green man is calling you to really hold space for others uh, as a teacher or a guide or a mentor. The, the green man is sovereign and powerful in his own right. He, <laughs> he is the guardian of the forest, the masculine guardian of the forest. There's also the green woman, of course, right? But this is the masculine energy. The green man, the watcher in the trees, the guardian, and he's holding space for the king, essentially. He's holding here the horn of plenty and mixing this cauldron. And as you can see here, he has this staff. I almost think of this as a rod that he might give to the king once the king is found. You know, this is kind of like Arthurian legend style, right? Once the king pulls the sword from the stone, you know, the green man would help guide him um, to become the king he's always meant to be. So this is kind of a really good sign that you have actually gotten comfortable in your own power and in your own sovereign status. You guys are very mature and very developed. And if you've been feeling like you have maybe lost your way or that you're not doing doing enough or not working hard enough, the green man is telling you like, wait a second, you're not giving yourself anywhere near, is not near enough credit. You are so uh, mature in your in your power. And I don't mean power over others. I don't mean like, you know, social power. I mean your own inner power, the power of your own light. You are so mature in that, that you are ready to be holding space for others and to be a teacher, a mentor, and a guide. And I think there's actually, that's what's going on with your, uh, 
oracle cards, there is, besides just this idea of holding space for others and really teaching what you have to teach, you are also on a spiritual journey of your own. Um, nothing is set in stone, mutable moon, because the green man, I think, really understands the ebb and flow of nature, that even if nature can be tended to like a garden, you know, maybe you can tend the forest, you know, pull the weeds out of your garden, um, and maybe you can guide other humans, you can guide people, you know, you can guide your children or your students or whoever it is that you're offering some kind of support to, but you can't force their future. I mean, you know that nothing is yet set in stone. So that also is reminding you not to be too fixated on any specific outcome. Uh, the green man is a little bit like a guardian of chaos. He understands that it is wild and free and it can only be kind of curated and nudged and you can't actually force any specific manifestation. So with this third eye card, pineal perspective, this is looking to, first of all, massive activations to your third eye chakra, um, increases, I'm actually getting a third eye headache, the center of my forehead is pounding as I'm, <laughs> as I'm talking about this, so yeah, you know, whenever this card comes up, it is to clarify that yes, you are getting activations to your third eye chakra, you know, if you're getting headaches, it's that, um, and it could also come along with pains in other parts of your body that you might not think are connected to your third eye, but they are, like the middle of your back, your adrenal glands, things like that, can all be tied in. Um, but besides just the physical activation, it is looking for a much higher perspective, right? The, the, the green man doesn't have the perspective of, you know, like a shepherd or a regular old farmer. He is wise and he understands the deeper wisdom of nature and of the, the wheel of the year and how the seasons change and, these, um, and everything flows. And, you know, natural disasters um, often can you can find the silver lining you can see the higher purpose you can see that everything is woven in a great cosmic web and everything is part of one larger whole so that is the perspective you're coming into and that is what you're being uh called to activate within yourself really so you guys are very mature emotionally intellectually and spiritually and this is your time to both deepen that on a personal level you know, deepen your, whatever your spiritual practices are, and also to be sharing whatever you feel you have to share with others and to hold space for others. And um, with this, there can be a certain need for patience with people you are frustrated with. Maybe you feel like they're going too slow. They're not waking up fast enough. They're not developing fast enough. The, this, the green man is infinitely patient because he is really tuning into the eternal aspects of consciousness and he is seeing how everything is connected and how everything unfolds in perfect cosmic timing. So definitely a little bit of a call here to gain perspective and to work on your patience. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. You guys got the hooded man. This would be the hermit in a traditional tarot. Let me get the light on this. You guys also got, which I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but you got the new moon in Virgo card. And today when I'm filming this, this is the new moon in Virgo. I know by the time I post this, it won't be the new moon anymore, but that's an extra layer of synchronicity for you guys. And <laughs> Interestingly, the hooded man, who would normally be the hermit, is the card of Virgo. So, like, major Virgo emphasis in this. I don't know if that means anything to you guys in terms of your birth chart or transits you're having, whatever, but um, definitely an emphasis on that and Virgo energy being all about, you know, we think a lot it's about perfectionism and you know, kind of keeping house and being a mother type of thing. But I'm really realizing the last couple of days that Virgo energy is the energy of the spiritual initiate. You can think that, that word initiate has been coming and coming and coming to me. If you're thinking back to 
mystery schools, you know, in the ancient world and antiquity, the mystery schools where you would go and you'd be initiated in the mysteries of of the universe, right? Of whatever that spiritual tradition was. A lot of different spiritual and religious traditions will initiate you into their tradition. And then you would, that's when you would get to learn and to study and eventually become a spiritual leader in your own right. So you guys are definitely being initiated here. And with the hooded man coming out, it's always a call to really go within, um, this is knowing that the initiation isn't so much anything to do with other people telling you that you're initiated or going through some kind of initiation process within a group of humans. It is your own personal initiation that happens between you and whatever higher powers you believe in. Whatever your personal experience of your spirituality is, the, that initiation happens internally and your spiritual journey happens internally. Your evolution of your consciousness and your personal development, all of it happens internally. This is such a internal journey. I can't say that word internal enough to get the hooded man with the new moon in Virgo card on the new moon <laughs> in Virgo. It is nuts. So you guys are being seriously called to, you know, take a time out, take time for yourself, take time to meditate, contemplate, or just sit in stillness and quiet. This is you need to create a still container of space for yourselves to explore your own inner planes. Okay, and the new moon in Virgo card, here it says, a time to give rather than take. With Virgo, there's also an element of being of service, right? As a, a lot of times as a being of service spiritually or as a healer or as some kind of teacher. But I think for you guys, this is more of being of service energetically. This is not, <laughs> this is not like you have to go, oh, 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 you know, I'm sitting around and just meditating all day and I'm not doing anything. I'm not helping anybody. Um, yes, you are. In, in fact, the best thing you can do to help anybody is to hold higher frequencies. And you do that by doing your inner work, walking your path and, you know, doing your shadow work, releasing your traumas, doing whatever healing you need to do, you know, doing all of those inner things. And that will help you raise your consciousness, raise your frequency. And that is how you truly help other people because that will help them. They will eventually start to flow upwards towards the space that you have created, right? So don't worry so much about literally helping people physically, although of course that is always good. That is always something you can encourage yourself to do, but don't force yourself and certainly do not do it if you're feeling drained, okay? Um, this is a, this is like, these are three very spiritual cards and I really think you're, at least for now, meant to be of service in terms of your vibration rather than in terms of you know, cooking people dinner and helping people move and stuff like that, right? Um, and because look at this, you also got beyond the mind. <laughs> this person's crown chakra, and it's not even just her crown chakra, it is also her like soul star chakra, just lighting up and exploding so much light coming through, and also her throat chakra. This is communicating with the universe, communicating with spirit, communicating with whatever higher power you believe in, right? Whatever your vertical connection is, this is getting serious downloads. And that is why you need to be in hermit mode, right? Because you need to make the space. Um, you need to make space and quiet your mind. You need to go beyond the mind so that you can receive this communication, this information from the cosmos. Uh, it really reminds me of the other day, just yesterday, actually. So the full moon, the new moon energy, I could feel it coming in and I was just feeling really overwhelmed, really irritated, just really exhausted and just, you know, feeling pretty blah, like all day, right? So I didn't really feel like meditating, but eventually I just found myself sitting there anyway. Um, and I fell into a really, really deep meditative state and I felt a feminine energy come in and she spoke to me. I don't really know what name to put to it, um, but it was definitely feminine. And she told me that it's normal to be feeling this way because everybody is 
integrating so much right now and it's difficult and there was a lot more to it than that but unfortunately I was in such a, of an altered state that I you know quickly forgot most of it but I know that she was there I know that she was working on my energy and I know that that was sort of the gist of what she communicated to me and I will I when I came out of meditation I felt so much better and I think that is relevant for you somehow you're having that kind of experience it is okay to take time out for yourself and it is okay to be feeling whatever you're feeling but also just remember that you need to go inwards to integrate all of this mess because you are getting major downloads major codes coming in and you need to take the time out to integrate you need to take to take the time out to integrate i think that's basically the gist of your message so thank you so much for tuning in i hope to see you guys again soon bye Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. You guys, in order to align with your highest timeline, want to be resonating with the King of Cups. In this deck, that is the King of Vessels depicted as a heron. And I love this depiction of the King of Cups because the heron is, as this King of Vessels, he is all of those things of embodying full divine love, just being in perfect harmony with his emotions and being in perfect flow and holding space for others and being able to love others unconditionally there's so much unconditional love with the king of cups right but also with the heron it is reminding us that the king of cups doesn't necessarily need to be like mucking about with everybody's lives all the time he doesn't need to be an extrovert he doesn't need to be physically involved in the minutia of everybody's lives so you know if you have family that you really care about this is reminding you that you can stand a little bit apart and that's okay and you can be just as loving and you can be just as compassionate and you can be just as helpful but still you know it's okay to be an introvert it is okay to take time out to you know stand on one leg in a pond it's okay to go fishing right it's okay to sit and meditate and take time out for yourself so a little bit of reminder there that i, was, I just I love herons. They're really meaningful to me. So if they mean anything to you, then you you know what I'm talking about, right? But definitely the main message here, the main energy you want to be cultivating is unconditional love. <laughs> and so that's why I like using this, you know, one singular tarot card to find out, you know, what energy should I be leaning into right now? Because it's really funny. I almost always get something like the King of Cups or the Ace of Cups or the Queen of Cups or the Ten of Cups. It's always just like cards that symbolize love. That is, you know, probably 90% 90, 90 of the time, actually, it's a love card, just an unconditional love. Be more loving. Open up to love. You know, receive more love. Give more love. Remember unconditional love. <laughs> remember that we are all one, that kind of thing. So that is your main energy, main message. That's what you want to be doing. Um at least for now, to manifest your highest timeline. But also here, the two oracle cards for our kind of bonus messages. Sorry, guys, my chihuahua is super excited. One sec. Okay, I hope I can get through this without him freaking out. We are, I'm on the West Coast, and because of all the forest fires, we have not been able to go outside for a week because the smoke is so bad and my dog is going totally stir crazy. So anyway, <laughs> luckily for everyone, prosperity lies ahead. I feel like for some of you, this is just, you needed to hear this. You needed a little bit of reminder that everything is going to be okay. That, you know, your money problems or your living situation or your job problems they're going to resolve themselves. It's going to be okay. Prosperity lies ahead. You know, new moon in Taurus. So, and if you're watching this near the time when I post it, um, I'm posting it towards the end of Virgo season. You know, we have the equinox coming up. We have Libra season coming. And I feel like a lot of things are going to start to shift and resolve. These things that a lot of, you know, governments all across the world have been stuck in. And we've all just been stuck in our own internal processes for a really long time for you know many months now and i think that's going to start to shift in libra season because there's going to be that focus on the other on self and other and on bringing that cosmic justice in and things are going to start to balance out so i mean that might apply for anybody watching this even years from now but especially for people watching this you know coming into libra season or during libra season 
things are going to start to even out um, very soon. And finally, Starseed Elemental. You guys are starseeds. Throwing that out there. Even if you don't resonate uh, with the idea of starseeds or you just don't like aliens and that kind of thing, um, this is here to remind you, you know, that you might... Maybe you identify with the term light worker, or maybe you're a mystic, but this is reminding you that you are here no matter how you identify, no matter what labels you use, no matter how you think about it, you are here to be of service in a spiritual capacity. You are here, you know, you are, you are here, you are watching this video, you know, in 2020, or if you're watching this in 2021, or even 2022, whenever you're watching this, you're still, if you're watching this, it's because you are part of the Awakened Collective. That is what this is really about, even if you're not a starseed, okay? This is, you're part of the Awakened Collective. You are you are waking up. You have remembered who you are so much earlier than everybody else. And that is because you are here to help everybody else wake up and remember who they are. And that is also why it is important for you to embody this King of Cups energy, this Heron, um, that unconditional love. You came here to channel unconditional love. To everybody else who has forgotten how to feel it. So I know it's not always easy to feel unconditional love, but it is something we can practice. And eventually you can actually have like breakthroughs in consciousness where suddenly you can feel unconditional love literally channeling through source, through you. You can become a conduit for the unconditional love that comes straight out of source. So it's not even something you need to feel on a human emotional level, you can feel it coming straight out of source. It is an actual cosmic energy that you can channel. And you guys will, one day when it is, I mean, some of you might've already had that happen, but one day you will have that because it's part of your path. It is part of your path to channel unconditional love. So there you go. That's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for doing your work and for being here and for being awake. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. You guys have a little bit of a funny card, but I completely understand it because I got this card for myself just the other day. So you guys got the Four of Vessels, which would be the Four of Cups, and it's subtexted in this deck as boredom. So now you're thinking, well, wait a sec, how will leaning into boredom help me align with my higher timeline? That doesn't make any sense. This must be a mistake. <laughs> And when I got this card over the past weekend, I thought the same thing. I was like, okay, universe, you pulling someone a joke on me? Or did I just, was I, am I so unaligned? I pulled the wrong card. This doesn't make any sense. And, but I decided just to lean into it and find out what would happen because I was already feeling really bored when I pulled this card. And I'm not the kind of person who gets bored easily. I mean, I'm almost never bored. I could just sit and breathe for weeks and I can be alone by myself completely with just me and my animals for months at a time and, and love every minute of it. I'm I'm just, I'm never bored. I just, I don't know. I, I don't get bored. So, but then when I pulled this card, the day I pulled it, I was, I was so bored. I was so bored. I didn't even want to do anything. I didn't want to read a book. I didn't want to watch a movie. I didn't want to walk the dog. I didn't want to cook. I hardly even wanted to eat. I was just so mind-numbingly bored. And that was very interesting to me because I was like, what is this? Why am I so bored? So I decided just to lay on the couch and just kind of be a useless chump. Like <laughs> not even meditating, not even trying to be spiritual or not trying to do any personal growth or anything. I was just a useless lump. Okay. And I did that for like two or three days. And interesting things happened. <laughs> um, I discovered, or maybe I was reminded that boredom is part of the process. It is part of the cycle. You know, as you cycle through all of the experiences of your life, it's like a wave, right? Or like a spiral. You have moments, uh, you know, of productivity, you have moments of contemplation, you have moments of shadow work, you have moments of personal growth. You have moments of advancement. You have moments of taking a few steps back. You have moments of being in the cocoon. And you also have moments of just being totally bored. So bored, you just kind of want to throw yourself off the cliff, right? Um, but the purpose of that kind of boredom is because it actually can create 
space or create the motivation for something crazy and wonderful to happen, a kind of totally brand new idea that you would never have thought of if you hadn't have been so bored and looking, because when you're bored, it's basically you're looking for something entirely new. You're looking for a new way of being, a new thing to do, a new thing to think about, a new thing to experience. And if you go to the really the bottom of the depths of the boredom, that kind of allows that new thing to come in. Like, look at your oracle cards, okay? You literally got blue moon. Believe in the impossible. That's what's that's what's happening. This boredom that you're feeling um, is so <laughs> your blue moon can come in. Something totally unexpected, something totally new. This is a whole new paradigm shift. If you're feeling so bored, so bored with everything in your life, it's because your whole life is about to change. You're about to usher in a paradigm shift and you're being reminded here, once in a blue moon is going to happen. Believe in the impossible. And here we got star seer. Look at this. I don't know if you can see it, but there's this being with their third eye wide, wide open. And she's holding a ladder, a ladder to the stars. And she's there's a little person there climbing the ladder to the stars. And that's what you're doing. I think you're this little person. Um, and you might be bored at the bottom of that ladder. But you're like going, wow, I am so bored. I am so bored that I'm going to climb that ladder and I don't know where it's going to go. Kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk. You're just like, I'm just going to, uh, it's going to be, it's going to suck. It's going to be a lot of work, but it might be worth it because I'm going to see what's at the top of that ladder. And what's at the top of the ladder? The star, the star is at the top. So, you know, it's going to be different for all of you. What your next shift is, what your next big idea is, what your what you're bringing in, what's coming in for you, but whatever it is, it's gonna be so good. It's the blue moon, it's the impossible, it is the star, it is climbing completely out of your past paradigm and, and out into outer space, okay? <laughs> so, you know, that could manifest externally in your life with various things shifting, or it can be a completely new way of looking at the world coming in, like a shift in your consciousness. So. If you're bored right now, that's fine. Be as bored as you want. Do whatever you need to do to cope with your boredom. Um, but just uh, wait that out. I don't think this will last very long. Honestly, I would say a few days at most. But I mean, it's different It's different for everybody. But as soon as... the It's like the boredom bubble is expanding and expanding. And once it, the boredom reaches critical mass, then it'll burst. And then you're off, um, you know, into the wild blue yonder. So... <laughs> And that wild blue yonder will be of a frequency that is more in alignment with your highest timeline, with your highest good. You'll be more divinely aligned once you bust out of this boredom. So you're just bored because you're watching a pot boil. But soon, dinner will be ready and it will be delicious. So uh, good luck, guys. Don't be too bored. Although the boredom, even though it is tedious, it's actually serving you and you will know what I mean soon enough once you break out of the boredom part of your cycle. So hang in there guys. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey card number five, welcome to your reading. Your guys is very synchronous. The main energy that you have with your tarot card is the moon on water. This is the moon card like any regular tarot, but there's really an emphasis here on the reflection, the reflection. And I'm reminded instantly of Plato's parable of the cave. And if any of you guys ever had to read that in school, if you know what I'm talking about, you can look it up. It might actually be really relevant for you guys right now. Plato's parable of the cave. It is, you know, about a guy who lives his whole life in a cave and, you know, there's fires at the mouth of the cave and he can see shadows being cast from the outside world, but he's never been out of the cave. He cannot see what is actually outside. He can only see the shadows being cast. And <laughs> yeah, so you guys can look into that if it if that feels relevant for you. But <sighs> you're basically being asked to realize that your life is kind of like this reflection. Your whole human life is a shadow and that the light source 
is your consciousness. And now how you, how exactly you conceptualize this will depend on your personal beliefs, what your spiritual belief system looks like. So, you know, the moon, it represents the light, right? What is the light to you? Is that your soul, your higher self? Is that source? Is that God? Whatever that is for you, you obviously have some kind of belief of some kind of light source or some kind of source of consciousness or some kind of higher power that is, you know, that is not here, <laughs> you know, in the physical, right? Something non-physical. And you're really being called to dig into that and to think about how your physical body it, we think of our physical bodies as so real and so concrete. And, you know, sometimes we even think that our physical reality is all that exists. But really, our physical reality, is it's like the shadows in the cave. It's the shadow from the real world. It is the shadow, the reflection of the moon on the water, right? And it's funny, actually, because the moon doesn't actually generate any light itself, right? The moon is reflecting the sunlight. So by the time you get the moon reflecting on the water, it's a reflection of a reflection, that is how, you know, the light is refracted that many times. So this is, it's pretty deep and abstract and I don't quite know how to articulate it because I just, I get the sense that you guys will have different perceptions of, you know, of spirituality and how you think consciousness works and how you think the universe works. And that's all good. I don't care <laughs> what your personal like framework is for this, but I guess if I were to try and just sum this up, in order to align with your highest timeline, you are being asked to consider how your physical reality is a reflection of a reflection. And you can repeat that as many times as you want, a reflection of a reflection of a reflection. Reminded of a Nine Inch Nails song called A Copy of a Copy, or that's the lyrics. It's copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, you know. How many times is your consciousness re reflected before it gets to you and your physical body? How many times is the light reflected? If our physical reality is the reflection of the moon on the water, what does that say about the nature of reality, right? <laughs> and what does that say about what is beyond our physical reality? Where does the light come from? Where does consciousness come from? Where does the moon get its source of its light? Where does the sun get the source of its light? That kind of thing. So... I know that's pretty uh, vague and tangled, but that is literally the point here. You are being initiated into the mystery, the mysteries of the cosmos. And it, the point here isn't to take anyone else's understanding. You know, I could explain my specific perspective on all of this, but that's besides the point. You are being asked to go on the journey of discovery yourself, go think about these things, ponder them, feel into them. What does your intuition tell you? What is your connection with your spirituality tell you, right? This is your mystical moment. This is a very mystical moment. And you wait till we talk about these Oracle cards. You have full moon, surrender to the divine. And then over here, soul star chakra, merging with the divine like, wow, right? Surrender to the divine and merge with the divine. This is you becoming, first of all, really, really committing to your spiritual path, to your spiritual awakening, to your process of self-discovery. And this can be feeling a little bit like an ego death because you guys are being called to surrender twice, like <laughs> hardcore. And, and in order to fully surrender to the divine or to the cosmos, and in order to merge with your higher self or to merge with source or to merge with God, you need to, you know, significantly release pieces of your ego. And maybe that is why you're being called to think about this moon on the water, about how everything is a reflection, right? If our physical reality is just a reflection of non-physical realms, then, you know, your whole egoic structure isn't, isn't real. It is just a reflection of a reflection, right? And with that in mind, it becomes easier to let go of the parts of your ego that no longer serve you because when you when you end up getting called to surrender like this, it, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I know how, how this, how scary it can be and how frustrating it can feel and how you don't want to lose your individuality. You don't want to lose yourself. You don't want to just 
poof out of existence and just become one with the universe. You still want to be you and, you know, you're not being called to completely dissolve yourself. I mean, you, you some of you might have ego death experiences where for a moment of our percept, our relative time, maybe you do completely dissolve your ego and you have an experience of just being one with the universe. That totally it happens, but you come back to yourself, you come back to your human body, you come back to your ego and you continue on living your life, but you will eventually find that parts of your ego that you built up the parts that are negative, the parts that are hateful, the parts that are judgmental, the parts that are traumatized and hurt, the part that is like a wounded child, they'll start to fall away and you can just be start to become so much more of yourself. By letting go of your ego, you become more aligned with your higher self and you just become so much more. This For some of you, this could be um, a soul braid experience where uh, aspects of your higher self actually like descend down and inhabit your body with you. And that, that might sound weird, um, you know, but I've experienced that and it's anything but weird. I mean, the process can be strange and unsettling and even uh, painful, but once you've settled in, you just realize, wow, I am back. I am more myself than ever. It is becoming more of yourself. That is the thing here to remember when you're merging with the divine, you're actually, <laughs> you're not losing yourself at all. You're not merging with something that is outside of you. You're merging with like your long lost pieces of yourself. This could also be soul retrieval, your soul fragments coming back to you. And just remember through this whole entire process, you're reuniting with yourself. You're becoming more of yourself and it's going to be awesome. But in during this process, you could be having all kinds of unpleasant ascension symptoms you know, so just take care of yourself and hang in there and don't force this. This will flow and unfold absolutely naturally. There's nothing you need to do except, you know, surrender. How do you surrender? All you need to do is just affirm to yourself that you're ready. I am ready to surrender. I am, I want to surrender. Just get comfortable with the idea. You can literally just say that if you don't know how to like settle into this process of surrendering, just say, I am ready to surrender. I want to surrender or something similar like that. It can be whatever. That's it. And that will just start to smooth out the process. And the other thing is this is since this is the soul star chakra, you might start to feel uh, aware of sensations like a foot or two feet above your head. <laughs> you know, you've either experienced that or you haven't. Uh, so you'll know what I mean if that happens to you, but it can be really weird to feel tingles two feet above your head. For me, I usually feel it like a foot above my head. Some people say the soul star chakra is like two feet. But, you know, if it's above your head and you can feel it tingling, it's weird. And that's this starting to happen. That's you opening up to your transpersonal consciousness. And this is very deep, <laughs> very exciting. And this is... This is the moment where you really shift your consciousness in a major way. Some of you may have been waiting for this for years, walking your path and wondering when is it going to be your time to know that you have really, that you have really made steps towards your ascension or you really, that you really are walking your spiritual path with any effect or with any purpose. Uh, things are going to start to become a lot more obvious. You guys could have all kinds of strange unexplainable experiences your life is about to get a lot more mystical and a lot more interesting in a good way and oh this is this is only good this is only good so <laughs> congratulations guys and good luck hope to see you again soon bye Hey guys, this is card number six. Welcome to your reading. And you guys are going through a period of shadow work. Um, and it's a period of healing for you. But before I get to that, let me talk about your tarot card here. This is the Wanderer. This is the Fool. This is Zero. This is 
a complete reinvention of yourself. And also, if you just look at this person, they're they're walking on the rainbow bridge. They're about to step step off over this body of water here, but they're going to be walking on the rainbow bridge. And look how free and light and fresh they're feeling. Um, <laughs> that is what you want to be holding. You want to feel like you can absolutely have your fresh start and that you're not only are you going to but you have it now this is your fresh start anything that happened before no matter how traumatic it was whether it was things you did to somebody else or it was things they did to you or it was your whole life falling down around you or if it was just a long stressful protracted feeling of entrapment whatever it was it's all over starts fresh now feel that if you can feel that even if you're still in whatever situation you're in if you can feel the feeling of freedom and feel the feeling of starting over brand new as a whole new <laughs> reconfigured consciousness that will help usher that in that is how you can get there you, you don't need to shift your life first you can shift your frequency first and that will help your life shift around you to match that right Always resonate with the feeling, with the frequency of your desired outcome first. You don't need to wait. That's what humans always do, right? We always think I can't feel good until X, Y, and Z happens, right? Nah, feel good first and then X, Y, and Z will unfold more smoothly. So yeah, feel like a zero. Feel like the wanderer stepping off into the unknown, completely free and clear. And your oracle cards really go beautifully together. Work through your fears. New moon in Scorpio. So this is your shadow work. And it's specifically addressing things you're afraid of, things you're terrified of. And the thing is that anything we're afraid of, why are we afraid of it? It's because we've been traumatized by it uh, in the past, right? If you're afraid of shining your light and speaking your truth and being your own unique self. That's because in a past life, you were persecuted for being you. You know, maybe you were a witch who was burnt at the stake, <laughs> you know? And so now you, you know, you hide your spirituality or you practice your witchcraft in private, or you're just afraid of ever showing people who you are, you know, maybe even intimately and in, like in your love life, maybe you're afraid of showing anybody who you truly are because like it's time to recognize that you don't feel that way for no reason, you know, and you might have felt like that even from when you were a very small child. It's because of your past life trauma, you know, whatever you're afraid of, trace it back to the root. Why are you afraid of that? What traumatized you? Um, and then you can start to unwind it so that you no longer have to be afraid of it. You no longer have to be traumatized by it. And that is how you come into this time of healing and once you're healed, then you'll be truly the wanderer, the fool off on a fresh new hero's journey. Yeah, I was just looking at the imagery on this card. This feels like, you know, someone's energy body almost like flows of energy and everything is all smooth and beautiful. Um, I don't know if any of you are interested in Reiki. <laughs> I've actually never done Reiki myself, like never had a Reiki session performed on me. Don't really know that much about it, but I just, that so came to mind um, looking at this because a Reikiist can help optimize the flow of energy in your body. So if you've been sort of, maybe this is just a message for a couple of you. If you've been sitting there going, oh, should I try Reiki? Could that help me? <laughs> uh, maybe that's just too weird or I don't know if it works. I don't know if it's real. I, I think that, Maybe there's a message here for you guys to go. If you've been thinking about that, go ahead and try that. Try that. It could really help you um, clear out like energetic blocks. At any rate, maybe it's not Reiki, but there's something here about clearing the blocks out of your energy body or out of your chakras. And so part of that is just <laughs> facing your fears and doing the shadow work and figuring out what you're traumatized by and then, you know, facing it and releasing it and forgiving it you know if you've hurt other people you need to forgive yourself if other people have hurt you you need to forgive them and you need to realize that you were never a victim and that you weren't there's no the victim perpetrator mindset is a human level mindset on a more abstract level 
nobody ever has anything happen to them that they did not choose. You know, we never have our free will violated. If something horrible and traumatic happened to you, you, your higher self chose for that to happen. And I know that sounds, <laughs> I know that can be a lot, uh, you know, that, that sounds crazy, right? Um, but honestly, guys, you know, I've remembered past lives where I was tortured to death, like literally on the rack, tortured to death. And you, you know, so I'm saying this <laughs> with memories of, you know, being tortured to death. And I, uh, you know, only remembered those lives because I was coming into a place where I could understand that I actually chose that. I was, even though I was tortured to death, I don't actually see myself as a victim. I see those as uh, very interesting lives and very interesting experiences that I chose to undergo because of the bigger picture, because of what I would learn and because of what I would feel. Interestingly enough, one of the lives where I was being tortured to death, um, despite the fact that, you know, the, the pain uh, eventually broke me before I died, um, it is one of my, it's probably my best memory out of all of my memories because while I was being tortured I felt so much love I felt love being like unconditional love universal unconditional love channeling through my heart chakra towards the person who was torturing me very strange right very very strange thing to have experienced but I understand that you know, I chose that experience because even though that was the most painful memory I have, it, it is also the memory I have of feeling the most love. And of course, there's more to it than that. It's that whole moment, that whole experience is part of a greater, like, soul cycle I've gone through. And, you know, that's, I guess, all I have to say about that without talking about myself forever. But the point is, the point that I'd like to get across is that Getting out of victim mentality is very important. I know that's not necessarily a popular thing to do because we don't want to feel like we're blaming the victim, obviously. And that's not what I'm talking about. It's just understanding that on a higher level, you have never been victimized because you chose all of those experiences and you chose them for a very good reason. And part of this shadow work, part of this working through your fears will start will be to start to understand why you might have chosen those experiences. And to do that, you really need to get out of the human mindset. You need to zoom your perspective out, 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 out. You know, zoom it, <laughs> zoom out as far as you need to go. If you need to zoom your perspective all the way out to source level consciousness, do that. Whatever you need to do to get enough perspective to understand why you chose horrible experiences. And I could talk about that all day, but... It's sort of one of those things that you either understand or you don't. Like if you can't understand it without an explanation, you won't understand it with an explanation. But for you guys to be getting this reading, uh, you guys are ready to understand that. And if some of you are really triggered, like really triggered, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry for triggering you, but at the same time, um, if these cards came up and you chose this pile, you found this video and you chose this pile, then I guess my service to you today was to trigger you and I just want you to know I'm, you know, sending you, <sighs> sending you love um, through, through my heart to yours and I don't mean to trigger you, uh, you know, just to be a horrible person. Um, I, I think it is my purpose to trigger you because that is what will help you heal and that is how you will come into this energy of the wanderer, this free spirit, this completely new fresh start. And remember, that is how you come into alignment with your highest frequency timeline. So you might be in for a little bit of a bumpy ride because <laughs> shadow work, especially when it's facing your fears, especially when it comes to facing trauma from past lives, sucks, right? There's no other way to put it. But this is sort of like a checkpoint. You 
go through this and then it will be resolved and it will be finally behind you and you will, you will be so free after this healing moment. You will be so free, so fresh and so new and you're going to feel so good. So you just need to get through this phase and it's going to be worth it. I promise you. So good luck guys. Sending you love and light. I hope to see you again. Bye.